Hi, I'm Craig Delaney and welcome to Home Chat. In our first episode on footings and foundations, you listen to Susan McDermott and Brian Hooper talk about the different soil types that are around Melbourne. And I guess when we think about soil types in layman's terms, in a gardener's terms, pick up some clay and squeeze it. See the amount of water that comes out of it. That's highly reactive soils. Pick up some loamy black soil or some sand, squeeze it, see how much change there is. That's mildly reactive soils. Now imagine that much water working underneath your house and you've got the effect that soils can have um, on your property when it's built. Today I'm, I'm, I'm with John Whitehead, Senior Design Engineer from FMG Engineering. Hi John, how are you? Yeah, well thanks Greg, yourself? Great. Now John, in our first uh, series that we did, we spoke very much, or episode one of the series that we did, we spoke very much about soils and soil types. And that's a pretty fair layman's assessment, isn't it? The more I can squeeze the soil, the more I can compress it, the more water that's in the soil, and the more reactive the, the soils are. Yeah, soils react to water. Um, they're much like a sponge, um, and how much they absorb um, tells us how they're gonna react. And, and certainly around Melbourne, we have a lot of different soil types, don't we? There are, depending on which suburb you are, it can even change from street to street. Or block of land to block or of land. Lo yeah, uh, neighbouring blocks um, can change a lot. These are the these are the sorts of things that you know people fall foul of, I guess, is that they they look at the ground, uh, or they look at the block of land above the ground level, and the land looks so inviting, doesn't it? It, it can do. Um, it's really what's below the ground though that's going to determine um, a lot of the information, um, a lot of the uh, design parameters that we use to put fitting on it. And, and on that note, we go into today's, uh, I guess, episode, and that's about um, all the things that make up site costs. And it, and it really is a very, I guess, maligned term, isn't it, John? Uh, it is used as a catch-all. Um, the things that are incorporated in there change from company to company. Um, but really what it boils down to is the site that you've bought, the lot that you are going to build on um, and uh, all the costs associated with developing that and getting your house on. Yeah, I, when we look at site costs and we break it down, there's a lot of different elements that, that make up site costs. We've got um, uh, things like board piers, which are now becoming very important under slabs, um, the, the slab type itself. Um, we've got uh, uh, root barriers that are required sometimes um, to go under a, a slab. Yep. Um, weird titles or weird sounding things like angle of repose yep. when we've got uh, deep pipes close to, to our house. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a myriad of items that, that, uh, that affect the actual site costs. In examining some of those items, yep. um, why board piers? What, what, why board piers under a house? And I guess for uh, for people watching this, a board pier is just like the pier you'd find under a wharf. It's a long pole of concrete that sits upright underneath a, a slab, isn't it? It's basically a concrete still that you're um, putting your foundation on. They're mainly used for um, getting through um, poor quality ground into good quality ground. Um, now the reasons for that might be due to uh, your cut fill if you're on a slopey site. It might be because you have um, part of the house on rock and the other part not. So we need to get that house all on the rock, so we use these stilts effectively. Mm -hmm. um, the other reason we might use piers is to get down below the zone of influence for trees. Um, trees are quite a big problem, um, not just when you um, construct a house. There may be no trees around you or very young trees. Um, we need to account for um, the drying effects of those trees uh, throughout the design life of the house. And when we talk about the, dry, the drying effect of trees, people I don't think really understand how much water trees suck out of the ground. They have a significant impact. Again, it's going back to whatever classification you have will determine how, um, how much those soils are going to react to the tree's presence. Um, and also the type of tree that is there. Um, they change from native um, uh, native species of trees um, and all the way through to palm trees have different effects on the soil. So the different trees take out different amounts of water out of the ground? Correct, yes. And if we've got clays to start off with which have a lot of water, then we're going to have a lot of expansion and contraction with those trees taking water out of the ground Absolutely. and I guess nature with rain putting the water back in it again. Back in, so there's going to be quite a difference there. Um, that the house has got to be designed to withstand. Yeah, and, and that's a really significant part. Now, angle of repose is, a, is another element that gets spoken about. Yeah. And I guess people don't understand that if you've got an easement, mm -hmm. 
either in a block of land or right beside the block of land. Yep. Depending on how deep those pipes are in the easement, the house has got to be protected if that soil's ever taken out. It's not just that. If you imagine when the council is putting their assets in the ground, they're basically opening a big trench to whatever depth they need right. to put those pipes in. When they backfill it, um, they aren't going to do it to, um, to natural conditions. You're going to have loose soil within that trench. So you don't want to be finding your house on anything loose, or anything that's going to compress, anything that's going to move. So yeah, we need to make sure that we know about um, the pipe asset depth um, and we can design accordingly for that. Wow, so there's a hell of a lot that needs to be taken into consideration then. We, we can't just put a house right beside where the, the pipes are going to be in the ground and think that the, the house is protected if that soil ever had to be uh, dug out for any reason. Absolutely right, yeah. Wow. And I guess one of the other interesting uh, parts of site costs that we don't talk about too much these days is building on slopes. Yep. Um, building on slopes um, gives us um, different issues. Um, usually when you build on a slope you do a cut fill operation. Um, what you try to do is um, make sure that anything you take off the back of the site you put on the front. Um, that reduces your um, cost to cart that soil away off site, mm -hmm. but it also gives us um, more problems in the same way that the council would put back loose soil in their trench. Again, we need to make sure how we place that soil at the front of the site um, is adequate to support the weight, um, or we can peer through that and again go back to the, the good soil as we are speaking about earlier. And I, and I guess when we've got all this soil moving around, again supporting the weight of the house is very important. We need to um, ensure that that soil will be compacted and if not, as I say, we go through it. The other thing with cut fill sites is you, um, you need to take into account what's around your site. Um, a lot of houses and a lot of lots are trying to use the full breadth of the, um, the lot. If you are similarly going to go up to your neighbour's property and you're going to be at a lower level, we need to protect that adjacent house. So we now bring in something called retaining walls, which need to be put around a house, and we actually then need to, uh, uh, I was going to say the word indemnify, but we need to support the, our slab when it's butting right up against a, a neighbour's house as well. Well, we need to support ours and also theirs. Um, if you are going to undermine their property um, by your cut, um, unfortunately you've got to make sure that their house isn't going to fall down either. I guess the one last point that I'd like to bring up in site costs, and it's a little bit of an unsung hero, mm. is agricultural drains, or as we call them in the industry, aggie yes. drains. Drainage around a house is critical, isn't it John? Absolutely. Um, as we've spoken about, the soils are sensitive to moisture, so we need to ensure that we can control the amount of moisture, especially um, in close proximity to um, slabs of the footings that we're putting in the ground. We need to control that moisture um, content and we also need to get away excess um, so there's no build up and then um, slow release so we get that constant movement. So it's not just the, the stormwater pipes uh, or the down pipes taking the water away, it's that, that loose water that's falling around the house going into the stone drains the water being caught and then taken away from the property to try and keep the soils as consistent as possible Absolutely. and the footings as safe as possible too. It's all about consistency. If you can get a stable um, water environment um, then that's going to help protect your slab and um, prevent some movement. Th that's terrific advice. Thank you John. So as you can see in our second interview on, on Puddings Foundations, we've really covered quite a few points when it comes to site costs. At the end of the day, there is a lot that needs to be taken into consideration. I'm looking forward to talking to you in our third instalment about the difference between raft and waffle slabs. Until then, take care.